Welcome back. Here to talk more about yesterday's big day, the primaries, is our power panel. We have Lynn White, journalist, Eleanor Tatum, publisher and editor-in-chief of the Amsterdam News, and Jackie Guzda, media professor at Western Connecticut State University. I have you guys out of order, but thank you all for being here. <laughs> it was a big day yesterday, but I don't know if there were really any huge surprises. Um, any surprises in your opinion? Lynn? Elliot Spitzer, bye-bye. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that was well, I mean, the polls had them neck and neck. And really, you know, we were just talking about how disgraced politicians didn't get the second chance they were hoping for from New Yorkers. But is it, is it really fair to group them together? I think so. I think after Mark Sanford in South Carolina, their egos made them believe they too could <laughs> come back. Guess what? In New York, we're a little more savvy, I think. Mm -hmm. And there is not a shot for people who have performed as badly as they have, uh, given what their experience was in public office before. I think the other part of it is that's interesting. I don't know if you agree or not but the fact that de blasio did come to 40 percent not mm -hmm. below it is big news at 97 percent of the vote in so it looks like that may happen we'll know in a week or so yeah i think what's interesting is that the polls ahead of the race were actually pretty accurate because it, it did show uh the comptroller's race neck and neck it did show de blasio perhaps avoiding a runoff i mean obviously the big headline today is will there be a runoff jackie if there is do you think that bill thompson can actually take the support from Christine Quinn, the, the little support that Anthony Weiner got, and actually win, or is de Blasio a shoe in at this point? I think he's a shoe in You know, de Blasio did something for us that the other candidates didn't, because all of the Democratic candidates were pretty much the same. There were a little bit of differences on things like crime, on uh, St. Vincent's Hospital, on the carriage horses, tiny little issues. But what de Blasio did was that he gave a voice to how we're feeling. Mostly, I think that the people in New York City are tired of the Giuliani Bloomberg years. They're tired of, as de Blasio called it, the tale of two cities, the haves, the have-nots, the rich and the poor. Mm -hmm. So he gave us a voice. He put words to our feelings. And he also had an ace in the hole. He had his son, sure. Dante, with his big hair, who did that fabulous commercial, which threw de Blasio up to the top. Because Along with his perception on stop and frisk, which I think exactly. really, which he really did take that issue and uh, made it his own, which yeah. is, I think, one of the things that really did help him get over the top. But I mean, in this whole election, just the way these polls went back and mm -hmm. forth, the way the candidates were up and down, I mean, I haven't seen something like this in such a long time. I mean, if you predicted three months ago what the outcome would be today, you couldn't have done it. Sure. Because mm -hmm. everything changed so many times. And I think an interesting poll that came out yesterday is that the majority of New Yorkers do approve of Mayor Bloomberg. So how brave was it for de Blasio to be the one candidate who really went against the administration? Well, I think almost all the Democratic candidates, except for Christine Quinn, mm -hmm. did go against the administration. And but he I was think the most liberal, the he strongest. Was but he attacking. was also the one that went after Christine mm -hmm. Quinn the most for being a Bloomberg you know, flunky, so yeah. to speak. And I think mm -hmm. the thing that most New Yorkers liked about Bloomberg was he was in no one's pocket. He had his own money, his own ideas, and he put them forward. But I think with de Blasio, even if you just look at the visual, we are a melting pot. His family is a quintessential melting pot. And I think people identify with that. People are ready for a change. So, Jackie, now uh, imagine the... the head-to-head -head it is Loda and de Blasio. How is the dialogue going to change? We've actually already heard de Blasio kind of acting more mayoral in his speech right. last night, um, talking about the safety of the city, of course, on the eve of 9-11. So how will we see this campaign change now? I think this is going to be absolutely crazy. It's going to be a race we have not seen in such a long time. Because you've got Loda, who is going to stick with the philosophy of the Bloomberg years? He's going to talk about law and order. He's going to talk about building the city financially. On the other hand, we have de Blasio. He's giving this message we have not heard for a long time. The melting pot, the middle class. Right. I could not count the number of times the Democratic candidates had talked about me. I'm middle class. I'm one of you. That's the new star now. Mm -hmm. Right. And Bloomberg yeah. was a one percenter. Sure. You know, and who did he really identify with? Not the 47 percent or the rest of us. Well, now the, that tale of two cities thing is going to come into yeah. play yes. as well. And mm -hmm. we're really going to see that play out very largely with de Blasio and Loda. All right. Well, we'll see if there is, in fact, a runoff. We know uh, for public advocate there will be an expensive one. <laughs> all right. Thank you, all of you. Lynn, Jackie, Eleanor, for being on the show, <laughs> as always.